In this video, I'm going to teach you how to calculate direction. A common myth in programming is that you need to be excellent at math. It certainly doesn't hurt, but you don't need to be amazing at math. I failed math all through school, high school, college. I just sucked at math. I didn't care for it, and because I didn't care for it, I didn't excel at it. It wasn't until I picked up game development that I started taking an interest in math and of course excelled at it. That's typically how learning works, right? You take an interest in it and you do better at it. Today, I'm going to show you how easy math can be and fun and blow your mind with a formula I bet you thought at one point in your life you would never use. Think about any video game you have ever played. Something with an enemy chasing you, like a zombie for instance. How does that zombie know how to chase you? There's a few things going on underneath the hood. For starters, the zombie knows the distance between itself and the player. It also knows the direction of travel to the player. How does it know that? Let's take a look here in Unity. Check out the example that we have. Our blue player is located at position 4-0 and our red enemy is positioned at 0, 8. What you and I see here may be two different things. I see a triangle. Check this out. With this triangle, we know two things about it. I know the X coordinate and I know the Y coordinate. Looking familiar? Remember that little formula Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared? Yeah, that method is not only used to calculate direction in video games, but it's also how we calculate distance. It's the distance formula in disguise. Pretty cool, right? I love going into schools, talking about game development, and legit blowing kids' minds when they realize, wow, that function isn't so useless after all. Here is what the direction formula looks like. In English, it reads exactly this. Direction equals destination minus source. When we calculate the direction, we're working with a vector. A vector can be thought of as just a line in 3D space with an x, y, and z direction. When we calculate direction for our enemies in video games, the direction to face equals the destination, which is the player, minus the source, which is itself. That will create a line, also known as a vector, pointing towards the target. Check out this illustration which is mapped to our example in Unity. By using Pythagorean theorem, we can calculate a squared plus b squared and find c. We can fill this in with 8 times 8 equaling 64, 4 times 4 equaling 16, and tallying that to 80. Take the square root of 80 and we are left with 8.94. By calculating c, we get a vector pointing at the target, and it will have what's called a magnitude, which is the length of the vector. The length is the same as distance, so our character is 8.94 meters away. Now let's take a look at coding this action. In Unity, we need to create a new c -sharp script, and I'm going to call this Calculate Direction. I'm going to attach this to our enemy script. Let's open this in Visual Studio. And the first thing we need to do is we need a reference to our target. So if we're creating enemy AI, the target is going to be the player. So what I can do here is I can basically create a private transform variable that's going to store the transform of our player. To have the ability to assign this in the inspector, I'll add a serialized field attribute. Let's hop into Unity, select the enemy, and let's apply that. You'll see here that we have a variable spot for the player. We'll drag in our player, and now our calculate direction script has a reference to the player. What we can do now is we can begin actually creating out the functionality to calculate direction. If you remember, the formula for direction equals the destination minus the source. So here we're going to work with a vector 3 called direction, and it's going to equal the destination. The destination is what? The player. So it's going to be player dot position minus the source. And what's the source? The source is us, the enemy. So we're going to say transform.position. And what this will do is calculate the directional length vector. So here we can actually say debug.drawRay. And we're going to draw one from our position in the direction of our calculated direction. And let's give it a color of green. We'll save this, hop back into Unity. And we should see here that we'll have a green vector. 
So here is a vector drawn between the enemy and our player. And as the enemy moves around, it continues calculating the distance as well as the direction to travel. So no matter where we are, we can always calculate this. The next part of this is going to be, let's get the distance from the enemy and the player. So here we have the enemy at negative four and eight, and then the player at four, zero. Let's set this enemy back to zero. So that's at eight. And this example will line up with our illustration. So if we actually were to run this and let's print out the length, which is our magnitude. So debug.log and we'll say magnitude plus the direction dot magnitude. This will return the length of that vector. And what we should see is 8.94. So it's gonna draw the direction and length. So that's our vector to travel. And then here in the console, it's now 8.94. And as we get closer, it will recalculate that value in real time. So if we wanted to create some functionality to move the enemy to the player, we could easily do that using the transform.translate method. Here we can say transform.translate. And when we open a parenthesis, it's looking for a vector three translation. I want to move across that directional vector. So to do that, I'm just gonna pass in direction. And instead of having it move, whatever that vector length is per frame, I'm gonna move that vector length per second. So I say time dot delta time. And when we run this, we're gonna get an interesting behavior. Right now, the length is nine. Every second, it's going to try to move whatever the direction magnitude is. And you'll see here that if I were to set this to say 15, it's going to rush towards us and then slow down as it approaches the player. The reason why it's doing that is because our vector length is so long and I'm telling it, hey, every second move that direction magnitude. So what's the resolution here? The resolution here is to what's called normalize the vector. You'll see here that this direction here is returning say 8.94. Instead, I want to take that direction and I wanna normalize it. And by normalizing it, that's going to shorten the length to one. So if I save this, now it's gonna move one meter per second towards the player. As well as you'll see here that the direction of our vector or the length of our vector is going to be set to one. And there you go. As the player moves around, that will calculate always at a one length and move consistently at a speed of one. Now we have the opportunity to create a speed variable and I could multiply that in here. I could say here, let's move say three meters per second. And by doing that, we now created a calculating direction system for our enemy AI.